but we're gonna talk about all manner of fragile gems. Oh dear. Oh, oh wow, look at that. I <laughs> no. Rob, I have a surprise for you, for the audience here. I brought something from home, one of my personal specimens. Show me, show me what you got. Be careful, because it's meaningful to me, oh, and okay. also it's not super durable. Do I need to <laughs> not breathe too heavily? Whoa, I'm not really sure how that ought to be picked up. Carefully. This is the first piece that I ever bought. This vertical structure is selenite. And I think the base is just quartz, but there's a good chance it's a few different materials. It's like, I don't know how strong that connection down there is. Yeah, honestly, I don't know either. So that's another reason why- It does like, stand up on its own pretty, pretty well though. Yeah, well, don't shake it. Selenite is a form of gypsum. There are other forms of gypsum, desert rose, satin spar. Gypsum is a two on the most scale. very soft. You can scratch it with your fingernail. I yeah. actually have scratched that with my fingernail. I mean, I'm not- On purpose or like- Yeah, 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 just to see. It's okay. Yeah, I was curious as well. <gasps> I heard that. Yeah, I actually felt Oh my so gosh. Good. It also has a few planes of cleavage. Cleavage is where some gems split along planes of weakness, leaving mostly flat faces. And so one thing I really like about it is you can see the perfect cleavage, right? Like it's just, it has perfectly split there. And then you can also see a plane going this way and then oh, I see that. this way. It's incredibly transparent. I mean, I yeah. can hold my hand pretty far away from it and still see all the way through it. Yeah, so that's what differentiates selenite versus satin spar. So satin spar, it has like this silky luster to it and it also is more translucent. Selenite is normally water soluble, meaning that it breaks down and deteriorates when in contact with water. Yeah, so we're gonna talk about fragile gems today. This one I knew about and that was my surprise to you all, but the next boxes, I don't know what's in them. So when- <laughs> It means it, it gets worse. <laughs> Yeah, I am a little bit nervous. So when we think about gem or mineral durability, there are three things to consider, right? So you have hardness, a material's resistance to scratching or abrasion. You have toughness, which is a material's resistance to breakage or cleavage. And then you have stability, which is a material's resistance to heat, light, or chemical attack, like acids or even things like dish soaps. So, let's get started. So proceed I with caution, know. I guess. <laughs> Fragility isn't just about fracture. You may want to dim the lights. Oh. That's speaking to the stability that you were talking about earlier. Okay, we have dimmed the lights. Let's go. Ooh, oh, oh I was not expecting facet. Oh yeah. Oh, that's so wow. pretty. This is Mashishi Barrel. Barrel is a family where we get gems like aquamarine, emerald, heliodor, goshenite. Red barrel. Red barrel and Mashishi barrel. And Mashishi, yeah, exactly. They can have like that deep, rich, sapphire blue color. It's just typically not gonna last unless it is stored in a dark environment. There are other gemstones that are known for being photosensitive or sure, sensitive yeah. to light, like amethyst, hackmanite, imperial topaz, but mashishi is particularly sensitive. Mashishi barrel is also known to lose its color when heated. So mashishi barrel was first found in the mashishi mines in Minas Gerais, Brazil. You can imagine how excited miners would have been when they found it because you've got this barrel that is like almost a sapphire color and then it's like you know they bring it up to the surface they're like look what we found and then it starts to lose its color and they're like well what 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 use is that i mean beauty I is guess. fading <laughs> beauty is let fading. nature tell us beauty is fading this gem is courtesy of uh, our friend jay you, he's been on the channel before he has some really fun stories he's been in the gym business for a while and he told us that this has faded a little bit. Really? It, yeah, and it was a, a bit darker of a blue. He thinks it's stable at this point, so bringing the lights down, that's just a precaution on our part. We obviously want to take care of his gemstone. The cause of color for Mashishi Barrel are color centers, which are defects in the crystal lattice. Color centers as the source of color are usually brought about by natural irradiation that occurs. And in fact, you can re-irradiate faded 
specimens like this if you've got an irradiator, but the color will just fade again. That is a beautiful color. It's really pretty. Right, we're gonna throw this guy under a tarp so we can bring the lights back up. We're gonna take care of him. Put him back in the box. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> this gem may fall apart when no one's looking. It's <laughs> Schrodinger's mineral specimen. I'm very intrigued. Oh, can we touch it? Yeah. Right, hold on, steady. Does it hurt? No. There's, there's crystals in the box. Oh my gosh. It reminds me of Wolfenite, just right off the bat. It does, although I would call this a little bit more like elongated and spiky. Is this crocoite? So crocoite is prized by mineral collectors because of its similarities to wolfenite. So it has that nice deep color. Well, it's super lustrous as well. There are a couple crystals on here that are absolutely blinding. It was first found in Russia, but it only occurred in very small crystals, but then a find in Tasmania blew everything else out of the water, which is actually the, it's the state mineral. It used to be called red lead ore. So it often occurs in prismatic crystals, but the crystals are actually hollow, so very... Oh my gosh, I see one. Oh, really? Yeah, check this out. This guy. Oh my gosh! Actually, yeah, wait, oh my god. Wait, that's Now wild. I'm second glancing, and they're, I mean, it's hollow, all hollow, hollow, hollow. So we have some specimens throughout our building, and our team of gemologists who manages our displays, these are sealed display cases. They'll periodically walk by and pieces of the specimens will just be They're laid just about. There. So like, it really it just does kind of shed. Kinda, <laughs> it, it does fall apart while you're not looking. Yeah. yeah. Let's go. A very fragile combination. Oh wow, look at that green. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, no. No, that was already like that. Oh my gosh, I know what this is. What is it? Vivianite. So it's dark. It's yeah, kind it's of hard dark. to tell, but when you pass light through it, it has this like bluish green coloration to it. Why don't we try and uh, zap it with the flashlight? Oh. oh wow, look at that. So this is even softer than the things we've already seen. It's a one and a half to two on the Mohs scale, which is remarkably soft. You can definitely scratch this with your fingernail. And it's also sensitive to lighting. It'll change color. I mean, from like a palish green all the way down to darker green, and it can even turn black. So there are actually two different things going on. So it oxidizes really easily, meaning when exposed to oxygen in the atmosphere, that can affect its color, but also sunlight. The chemical composition of Vivianite is a ferrous iron, so iron to phosphate with hydrogen atoms. Essentially what happens is when the photons reach these transparent crystals, they essentially can help convert the ferrous iron, so iron two, to iron three, ferric iron, as well as convert water molecules to hydroxyl ions. And so what you have is actually a, a different chemical formula. So some people call this meta-Vivianite, but it is chemically different. Some people believed that the Vivianite turning black was because it was absorbing evil. You know the ancient Romans actually used it as a pigment? Oh yeah. yeah. It's in a Vermeer painting as well. But can you imagine <laughs> using it as a pigment and then over time your <laughs> it starts to black? Turn, your blue dress turns black or whatever. That's a cursed painting that story right cur there. I, I it's absorbing evil. the evil, yeah. Is an unbranded box. The gem you can't touch. Iridescent sphalerite, fluorite, dolomite, druzy quartz on limestone. Oh, Tennessee. this is from Tennessee. Oh. Okay, so I we're gonna scoop this. it from below. Oh dear. Don't, okay. don't touch the hot zones. Okay, so hot. This Holy is really cow. cool. So you can see the purple fluorite. We know what that is immediately. You have the cubic crystal system. They're kind of like stacked squares. You have the druzy quartz, which is this grayish material. And then the really, the really <laughs> fragile you, you sound part, a little, uh... like scared, <laughs> yeah. is this iridescent sphalerite. I love sphalerite so much. I think it's such a pretty gemstone, but this has a very, very special iridescence on it, which yeah, this... you can see. So it's not like the sphalerite you've seen before. It is part of a one-time find in the Gordonsville mine, which is connected to the Elmwood mine, which is in Tennessee. It's famous for its fluorite. In 1997, 
a, a pocket of these was found. They mined it and as is customary, they cleaned the specimens. And what they found is <laughs> that uh, they cleaned the iridescence off of it. So it's, it's a very thin hydrocarbon layer that it has been deposited on top of them. And this one is one of the very few that hasn't been cleaned. All of the paperwork that follows this specimen has, you know, all caps, big bold letters, do not clean. I'm like trying to breathe quiet. That's an iridescence that I've not seen on too many. Gems it, 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 well, it looks reminds me of like Gertite. I don't know about you, but I'm a little nervous to keep this on the <laughs> table. So we're gonna put it aside. But you'll get a closer look later. It's padded though, is the other one. And you do have that. Sometimes fragile things can hurt you. <laughs> oh. <gasps> Oh my hey, yo, gosh, throw it's it out. So it's molded. Cute. It's bad. It's gone bad. Oh my gosh. Not like this though. All right, let's let's let them Are you see. Ready? It's so no, you're not. cute. Look at it. I actually think the name kind of is like thinning for it. Oakenite. So oakenite is a silicate mineral that sometimes forms in geodes like this or in basalt rock. It forms teeny tiny tiny needle crystals. They honestly look like cotton ball. I mean, they look yeah. very soft, but as our clue said, they'll get you. Yeah, uh, several gemologists here have had blood drawn from- Sticking their hand in the oak okay. idea. Yeah. <laughs> it will leave splinters in you. It looks so soft that I, I really want to touch it. So most oakenite is white. It can be bluish, but you can also find dyed yeah, color brightly, products. brightly colored oakenite that you can find on the market is dyed, and it probably came from China or India. Okay, we've got one last specimen that was, I cannot tell you how gingerly it was placed and manipulated across this table. <laughs> the clue, who has the best hair here? <gasps> Oh my gosh, how cute is that? I wouldn't breathe that hard. <laughs> Did you just do that? <laughs> I blew on it. She, it went <laughs> So this is Millerite. My geode over here looks like there's quartz on the inside, but yours... It's botryoidal chalcedony, and then the white is calcite, and then these fibers are Millerite. They're metal. Yeah, they're nickel sulfides. They are wispy, so even like our like our breath, you can see them kind of moving. They're found as little geodes in shale walls. These come from the Halls Gap area in Lincoln, Kentucky. So what I've just yeah, done is, is I've removed one of my hairs, and the Millerite is definitely thinner and finer than than the hair on my head. I mean, just the AC and like talking at it is making it blow around. It's pretty impressive. Do you want to pick a closer look? Ooh, yeah, it's gonna be difficult. I've gotta go for the oak and eye. I really like when gems can be somewhat personified, and I think that applies with the oak and eye, and so I want you guys to take a closer look at this guy. What's the personality of oak and eye? It's like a cute little Pac-Man. That'll splinter you. That'll splinter you. I like this one. I need you guys to see these hollow crystal structures. So let's take a closer look at crocoite. So like with most unboxing episodes, we can't unbox every mineral specimen there is. And there are loads of other specimens that are just as, if not more fragile than the ones we have on the table. Can't wait to pull those out and <laughs> handle those with care. But if we missed a couple specimens that maybe are your favorites, let us know down below in the comment section. And if you wanna learn more about the specimens that you have, we have a great resource on our new website, gemstones.com. The Gemopedia has any gem that you could think of. And within the Gemopedia, you can find resources on how to care for it, store it, clean it, so that you can protect them and enjoy them for a very long time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and of course, ring that bell so you don't miss out on our future videos. Thank you for watching. Bye.